Okay, everybody. So I've done a lot of ranking videos before, whether it's top 10 fantasy, top 10 this, top 10 that. But what we're going to do here today, and I'm excited to do for you, is rank every single series I have read, regardless of how many books in the series I have read. Because every time I make a list, I inevitably get the comment, why isn't this on there? Why isn't that on there? Because I didn't finish it, but I'm I'm gonna go ahead and, and give in to those comments for this video. I'm ranking every i I'm ranking every single fantasy series I have read, regardless of how many books in that series I've read. As long as it's more than one or one, as long as it's one or more, that's <laughs> what I meant to say. We're throwing it on here. I am not including individual one-off books. This is a series list. I'll be doing another video in the future for every single like one-off like Warbreaker. But Mistborn's on here because that's part of a series. I don't know why I made that distinction. I haven't slept well recently. Let's just jump on into it. So we have the first book, and I've only read the first book of the Rift War Cycle Magician. And I remember liking this one. It was good. It's not the most modern fantasy of all time, but it's fairly modern. And it's kind of in that like in-between awkward uh, stage transition from classic fantasy to modern. But it was pretty good. Um, and without, without putting too much thought into it, I'm going to say the writing style captured me. I remember the world being really well done. And the overall plot, well, many things like it have been done since then, was fairly new for fantasy at the time. And I'm going to go ahead and just throw it in B. We're going B. The actual real point of this video is to try and cut down on the number of people who ask me, why haven't you reviewed? You can see right here what series I have started and have reviewed. So if we hit on it here, you're damn well sure I have reviews of it on my channel, so go check those out. Moving on, we have Malazan. I've read three Malazan books. They were all spectacular in scope, execution, jarringly huge and I loved some of the character work. I did like a couple narrative choices in terms of like spending a whole book following these people, then jumping across the world over here to follow these other people, like damn that's jarring, and then jumping back for another book. Um, that, that was a bit odd, but that's really my largest complaint. And if that's my largest complaint, good job. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put this in A tier. It's A tier for me. Might get elevated to S tier as I get further on in the series, but as of right now, how I'm standing with it, solid A tier. Now we have Doc Savage. Moving on. Uh, eh. uh, it's good pulp, so it's C, but it is complete pulp. Uh, now we have pow the Powder Mage trilogy. I've read the first book, and I've, I've done a little bit of work into the second one, and it was good. I liked... Uh, Promise of Blood. I, I think the author isn't bringing a whole lot that's entirely new to fantasy, but he's doing a really good job of adding his own little twists on things here and there. It's my first major flintlock fantasy outside of Lightbringer, so that was nice and refreshing for me. Um, and I'm, I'm feeling good about it. I think it'll only get better as I get deeper into the series. I have a good gut feeling on the series, and um, Brian McClellan seems like a good guy. Go and be here right there, and I'm thinking it has potential to go higher up. Dark Tower. This is an interesting one because me and Dark Tower, T Dark Tower, have not always been the best friends. I didn't love it, but every single entry has brought it up. If I was being honest, if I was going off for like the first book alone, it might be C, but after the next few books, it clearly got elevated to B. After the next few books, it got brought up to A, and with the last book. <sighs> I'm still limiting for A for now, but once again, it's got S potential, man. Dark Tower, Stephen King, hot, hot damn, hot, 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 hot damn. You did a good job there. Um, now we have Dresden Files, notoriously on my channel. I have a love-hate relationship with this series. I think certain books are absolutely S tier, magnificent, and I think other books are as bad as like C tier, to be honest. Not D. None of them have been D, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, but I'm, I really like Dresden, and to me, it's like a perfect balance in between. Hey, meet Panat. Special shout out to you. Thanks for being <laughs> to your Patreon. Good timing. You're now in this video, and I'll give you a special shout out at the end too. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm hovering here between B and A tier for Dresden Files. Um, a couple of the entries do legitimately drag it down to B, and I think I'm going to leave it there. It's good. 
I, I legitimately love some Dresden books, and I legitimately love a lot of the choices of the series, and it gets me so interested in it, and I so want to go further deep, and I so want to go deeper into Dresden Files, which I will be in the future. Um, but I'm, I'm leaving it in beer for now, B for now, and saying it has potential to go up or down, depending on how the next few entries go, although I've heard good things. Now we have Witcher. First entry for S tier, no question. Don't even need to think about it. Witcher for me, uh, I'm, I loved reading these books. I have not played through all the games. I highly recommend the books to people. The author has a pretty interesting writing style. It's kind of alternative fantasy, and it's one that I think pretty much anyone can enjoy in terms of just appreciation of what the author's doing and doing so well. Fantastic character work, fantastic relationship work, some of the best world building that's out there in terms of like not the most elevated fantasy ever, but it's still really great. And I, uh, I, there's been a couple of books that I wasn't crazy hot on, but overall, I think Witcher will go down as one of the fantasy classics. Let's go ahead and put Lord of the Rings and S tier. Do I need to say why? It's the Godfather. It's the it's the big daddy. A lot of people consider it the goat. Um, you know, we don't need to really talk about that. And now we're going on to First Law, which I'm also going to be throwing in S tier. The Blade itself, or, or First Law, really, the whole trilogy. I haven't read every book in the First Law universe, but I have read this trilogy, and it was really what showed me what Grimdark can be in terms of just stupendous quality. Uh, so much character from the author coming through. This guy's voice shines in a great way, Joe Abercrombie. And I cannot wait to get deeper into the First Law universe. It's going to be a lot of fun. Are you guys ready to go along for the ride? And arguably, maybe the best character in modern fantasy in Glotka. Um, Glotka? Glotka? Glotka. Um, he's so deep, so nuanced, so evil, and so lovable. I, I cannot get over how much I appreciate him uh, on, on a wider scale. Really. Uh, he's... God damn. Uh, I can't, I still like just have moments where I'm reading other books and they're not quite as good at their character work. And like my, my go-to in my head is just to go to First Law's character work because it's so next level. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I, I, I appreciate it. And I think if you have not read First Law and you're a fan of Grimdark, go read it. Although what, what a lot of Grimdark fans will disagree with me on is I think if you're not a Grimdark fan, don't go read it because it's weird. There are a lot of people who like Grimdark fantasy who just insist it is for everybody. I'm not in that camp. If you find yourself not liking Grimdark fantasy, don't read it. It's not for you. Um, there's a weird thing in like Grimdark fans who are like, no, trust me, you'll like this one. Some people don't like it. I like it. I'm becoming to like it more and more. Um, still don't love it though. Like Prince of Thorns. Let's go ahead and jump to this one. I'm saying C. I understand a lot of people say, I've only read Prince of Thorns. I know it's the Broken Empire trilogy. I've only read Prince of Thorns. I didn't like it that much. I don't think it was bad because the author is an crazy talented author, but I just hated the character and the perspective given to me. So I didn't, and this is based off enjoyment. I didn't enjoy it that much. So for me, it's C. And I'm also putting the caveat on this one. It certainly has the potential to rise well above C and be in the B maybe even the A, and from what a lot of people are telling me, they're hyping me up, it could certainly be there, but I really did not like Prince of Thorns, although I'm hoping Broken Empire as a whole does get better as I come back to it months down the road. Um, but let's go ahead and jump in the next one here, Harry Potter. Of course I've read every Harry Potter book. I'm a millennial. It's just like a part of our uh, community. It's a part of what we are as a generation. It's in our blood. Um, I'm going to say Harry Potter solid B. It's good. It didn't bring, it didn't revolutionize fantasy like a lot of people think. It just brought a lot of things that had previously existed in fantasy to the mainstream. It also brought YA fantasy to a level it had never been at before. The closest probably in terms of YA fantasy getting to Harry Potter before Harry Potter level, uh, before Harry Potter set the Harry Potter level was probably Earthsea, at least in my mind. Um... I know a lot of people say His Dark Materials was YA. That was a marketing decision. It was not written to be YA. So I don't, I don't know. But I think Harry Potter is solid. It's, it's so much fun and it has a great world. But outside of that, I don't find it anything to be spectacular. The characters are good. The villains are good, but it certainly doesn't elevate the whole genre. And I didn't enjoy it. And I still don't enjoy it going back to it now on an AS tier level. Poppy War. 
uh, goes into the I respect the crap out of it, and I also enjoyed it, but man, is it darker than I typically like my fantasy. Um, having this, like, semi-historical fantasy is something I haven't had a ton of experience with, but I really liked, um, and it, it was bold. I liked a lot of the things done here. I liked the Poppy War, and I'm, I'm definitely interested to see what this series brings next for us. Overall, I'm stuck between B and A. I think, I think I'm gonna go B for now. While I do love this book, I can see myself getting burnt out on stuff that is just this dark. And I like the author's writing style, but it only, only having read the first book and not seeing any real influence or anything from this permeating all of fantasy, uh, I don't think it's quite earned A status yet. And I think this one, of any of the books I've put on here so far, has the highest potential to shoot up or drop down. Because I've seen a lot of fantasy series with a very solid first entry, and then they just taper down from there. Um, speaking of unpopular opinions, which we weren't, but I'm going to say that as a transition, Shadow of What Was Lost was one of the most disappointing books I have picked up on fan recommendations. I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, I'm stuck between C and D here. No, it's not. It's not. It's not sort of truth bad. It's C. Um, I just wow was not the uh, the biggest fan of this. Um, I found a lot of just errors. It seemed like in the storytelling narrative. Um, I I think most uh, notably in my review, and I'm not going to go over the full review here, but there was like a scene where these kind of innocent young kids have someone murdered in front of them, and then they're left in the room with the body for hours. And then they just continue on their merry way after that. And it's not talked about. And I'm like, are you kidding me? These kids are not, like, hardened at all. They've, they're on an adventure they're scared about. And we're having them witness horrific things. And you as an author are like, let's continue the journey. That just completely took me out of the story 100%. And I found multiple instances of stuff like that where it just completely pulled me out of what was happening. Which is a shame. Because I found almost everything else in the book to be on the scale of good. But I am very unforgiving when it comes to authors not considering ramifications of what they're writing and accommodating that because it just completely rips me out of the story. There's a lot of examples of this happening in writing where characters see something horrific or experience something or even like good things like, oh, this was good. And then it doesn't have like any ramifications of the story or on the character at all. And I just I, I hate that. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. Um, Lightbringer. Uh, Lightbringer for me, I'm putting a uh, solid, let's go, oh gosh, this is tricky. Ah, I'm going to go A tier for Lightbringer. I really love the work he has put into this so far, Brent Weeks. I'm so excited for the next one. God, I'm, uh, this one is so on the edge for S. I'm, ah. Ah, uh, let's go ahead and say, screw it. I'm going S tier. I'm going S tier for Lightbringer. It has its problems. I'm willing to admit that Lightbringer has its problems. I've mentioned them in the other reviews. Brent Weeks is not the best at writing women. He overly describes bodies and a couple other minor flaws, but damn, he's good at writing magic, combat, story, character, relationships, so many other things that I'm all about. Sorry, I just got texted about lunch. Hold up. Cool. Lunch. All right. So now we have Stormlight Archive. Yep, that's going to this tier. Um, one of my favorites. I've made that clear. I absolutely adore Brandon Sanderson's work here. I think Delinar is one of the best characters and one of the best backstories in the history of fantasy. Kaladin's a great entry character uh, for the first uh, Way of Kings, first entry. And I, I can't think of a weak point for Stormlight. It's so ridiculously rock solid. There were a couple choices in the third book I personally didn't vibe with, but overall I don't think they're like objectively bad. It's just minor, minor personal preference things. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say that's S tier without question. We, Everyone here probably loves Brandon, except for like the one guy who's going to leave a comment now, like, I'll read it. But I think, I think, uh, I think Way of Kings, I think Stormlight as a whole uh, is going to be remembered as a fantasy classic, if not already clearly on nearly that level. Uh, Gentlemen Bastards, another S tier, one of my all time favorites. I know there's a lot of S tiers right now, but trust me, there's going to be less. There's going to be less, um, or less being thrown up that high. I am uh, a big 
fan of Gentleman Bastards. It's one. It's maybe the best alternative fantasy series out there, in my opinion. Again, some of the best relationship work, maybe the best relationship work I've seen in recent years. Uh, I love what Scott Lynch has created here. Some astoundingly good world building for a very small, self-contained setting, which right now we're in the, the peak of grand epic fantasy. Make your worlds as big as possible. Wheel of Time, Malazan, Song of Ice and Fire, make them huge, make them big, bigger, bigger. And Gentleman Bastards goes against that. It's, it's very contained in this incredibly well-realized city. And Scott Lynch just permeates this smaller world with atmosphere that just helps you immerse yourself in the book. If the first third of the first book doesn't vibe with you, I recommend you push through until the end. At least give the first book till the end because I, I truly find this to be one that has, right now, it's not the biggest. I think it's a borderline cult following because it's not huge within the fantasy world right now. Um, but I think it, it could get there. It could hit that barrier where suddenly it explodes and becomes one of the most popular of all time once people realize what they're missing out on for not reading Gentleman Bastards. Broken, uh, Broken Earth. I'm going to go with A tier. I've only read the first book, which is, I, I, I feel uncomfortable putting anything I've only read the first book in S tier. Um, I was incredibly skeptical about some of the choices that the author took as I read the story. But after getting to the end, um, I understand every single one. I respect them immensely, and I cannot wait for the next entries. If you are the kind of reader who likes to see an author do things that you have not seen before and take risks, I cannot think of a better series to recommend right now off the top of my head than Broken Earth. Because, wow, not every single one of them pans out, but most do in really r impressive ways. I, I'm a big fan of what was done here. And I will be finishing the series soon. I've only read the first book of this one. Um, now we have, I'm just doing Forgotten Realms as a whole. Forgotten Realms is tricky to put because it's so huge. It has entries from multiple authors and it's this sprawling, just everything series. I could have broken it down into the individual series that take place within Forgotten Realms. I really could have done that, but I, I'm going off R.A. Salvatore's work and... I think he is so strong at some things and constantly getting better. But if I'm taking the full context of everything Forgotten Realms in, I can't bring it above B tier. I can't because there are certain books, there are certain stories that are just not that strong. They don't pan out. There are absolutely stories within Forgotten Realms that reach S tier. If you go with just uh, the Dark Elf trilogy, is that what it's called? Yes, the Dark Elf trilogy. That is S tier in my opinion. But the full context of Forgotten Realms brings it down to B. And I think people who have read most of Forgotten Realms will agree with me on that because it's um, it has its problems. And when you have multiple creative voices coming in like you do with Forgotten Realms, I think some of the problems Forgotten Realms is now suffering from are unavoidable in terms of some inconsistencies in tone and, I don't know, handling of certain characters. It's rough. It's rough. Um, name of uh, King Killer Chronicles. I'm going to just put that right there. Um, I, I am constantly fluctuating on how I feel about this. I think if I was in my m best I've ever viewed it, I might consider B tier. The worst I've ever viewed it, it probably would have gone D tier. I'm, I'm rounding those to just say C tier, comfortably put it there. I have issues with Patrick Rothfuss's writing style, a lot of his choices, and I am one of the people who is of the opinion that this guy currently has no idea to end it with his third book. Um, I think he is going to... If he if he's if he's done, I will be shocked if he has a satisfying ending. People will really dig. Um, and the guys made comments that a lot of people find controversial. I was just sent some of those earlier today by another booktuber. He's a uh, interesting guy, <laughs> and his books are interesting as well. As I've said before, and I'll say one last time here, I regret being so hard on the first book. I wish I was harder on the second book because King Killer Chronicles has its issues. Song of Ice and Fire. Ah, oh, gosh. I'm going to cause controversy no matter where I put this. The later books are not as strong as the earlier books. They're still great. Personal preference-wise, I'm feeling A. I think A Song of Ice and Fire is wonderful. We'll absolutely remember it as an absolute fantasy classic. It clashes in writing style and tone with my own personal taste enough that I really don't think I can, in good conscience, put it in the S tier. So for me... 
in the scope of all of this, S being the best fantasy series I've ever read, D being the worst fantasy series I've ever read, uh, it's going to go A, and it's going to be comfortable in A. A is great. A, look at look what it has as its peers in A. Dark Tower, amazing. Malazan, amazing. Uh, Broken Earth, amazing, from what I've read. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, Martin, you earned A, and maybe down the road when your influence is broader and I have more appreciation for what you're doing and you do land the series, ending it strong, um, you'll get bumped up to S. His Dark Materials, loads of fun. Um, marketed as YA now, which I, I can make a whole video on that. I don't like how publishing companies just decide to do things. Um, I think a lot of the fans think it starts stronger then gets weaker and weaker. I think it's pretty solid all the way through. I think there's some weaknesses that come more apparent later on. I'm shocked to learn there's new books coming out in this universe now. I need to get around to reading those, um, but I'm going to comfortably put it in B. You know, I, I like the story here, especially in the characters. That's that's without question. Mm, I think the three strongest things going for his dark materials are a couple of the characters are incredibly well realized and are easily good enough to carry the story all the way to the end of the trilogy. Um, I think the world built is fascinating and very different from a lot of what we typically get from fantasy which on its own is enough to really drag a lot of new people in. I think that's why this book series was so commercially successful. And um, yeah, the world really, really grabs people. It really does. Um, what I said another thing. Let me think. What was it? It had to be relationships. No, I don't I've, Whatever I said, that too. I'm really tired. And we're going to jump on now to Earth Sea. Another book I've only read one of, but that one book is the best YA I've ever read. I'm not a big YA fan, but it was great. It, it changed how I viewed what YA could be, and I have more respect for the genre as a whole because of it. Definitely A tier for that alone. I can't put it in S because I've only read one of them, um, but that, that one entry, rock solid. Rock solid! Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot of respect there. A lot of respect. <sighs> now, I'm going off enjoyment. So, Black Leopard, Red Wolf. This is going to be tricky because... So much respect for what Marlon James did here. He took such bold left turns. And if it was like, if all of them paid off like it did for um, Broken Earth, I would be putting this in ARS tier. Not all of them paid off because he took more extreme left turns than uh, N.K. Jimson did, but not all of them paid off in my opinion. Stylized writing to the point where it becomes detrimental. And... It's hard to get through. I rarely come across people who have read this book who will not say, it's great, it's so different, so original, struggle to get through it because his writing style is so extreme. Um, I can't wait for the adaptation that's coming down the road already because I feel like this will be a story that is better to tell in live action. Um, I, God, I have so much respect for it, but I just, the further away I get from it, the more I realize how much of a slog it was for me to get through. Um, I think I would honestly say Black Leopard, Red Wolf should be a must read for mega fantasy fans to see what a truly creative mind who's willing to step outside of what we typically get with the genre can bring to it. But, ah, oh my gosh, it was just not for me. So I think it's going to be the top C tier and have a, an asterisk next to it that its quality is A or S. My personal enjoyment brings it down to a C. So it's like weirdly hovering. I wish I could set this to just hover back and forth and go up and down, but that's what it is right now. Um, now we have Mistborn Era 1. Uh, Mistborn Era 1 is a very easy S tier pick for me. It's one of my all time favorites. I think a lot of fantasy fans will have a list that's similar to this, <laughs> where it's like a lot at the right top, because a lot of us love a lot of these stories. Um, but I, I can never, ever uh, stop loving the first Mistborn trilogy for being such a wonderful introduction to Brandon's works for me. It's the first thing I ever read by him. And I, I just remember just, oh man, this is, this is the true disciple, the true continuer of Jordan in my mind. Brandon to me has picked up and continues to bring what to, to fantasy what Jordan did and he's getting better all the time and he started great and I think Brandon in a few decades will be someone who we talk about in the frame of GOAT. Not yet. 
He's not there yet. I've never said he's there now. I'm saying he has the potential. And Mistborn Trilogy, spectacular. But the second era goes right in the B tier uh, because I, I didn't like it that much. I liked the world because it's a Brandon world. I liked the characters somewhat, but I just didn't... I, I think it was not nearly enough sustenance to be three books. And apparently there's more coming, and I'm just shocked by that because there's just not enough here to continue on I don't know. I'm way more interested in what's going to be happening with Mistborn Era 3. Era 2, to me, is just suffering in a lot of ways. And I don't know. It's just not on the same level. I know a lot of people love it, but for me, um, I don't know. I wasn't as big a fan, and I just think it was not nearly as meaty as a story as Era 1. Not even close. Uh, and now you know, we're going to put Wheel of Time in the D tier. No, I'm kidding. Uh, that goes right up in the S as well. It's my personal favorite. I don't need to talk about that much more at this point. We all knew it was going to go there. It's uh, it's my goat, my greatest of all time, and I'm I'm very convinced that we're going to see its legacy evolve and change and be reconsidered for fantasy in the near future. Um, this is my current ranking of every series I have either started or finished so far for you guys here on YouTube. It's been a blast. I plan on doing another one of these with like every individual one-off book, which will be heavily Stephen King and Brandon Sanderson, but also a lot of other things. Um, and I'm curious to see what you all have to say about my list. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you understand? Did you not understand why I did certain things? And I would love to see your own rankings for your own series. Um, I know it's kind of strange for me to put in stuff here I haven't finished, but with people constantly getting upset with me for not including things like Malazan, even though I've read three books, here's what it looks like when I do include it, even though I haven't finished it. It doesn't arguably get the position it should get higher up because I'm hesitant to put it higher up. Um, that's all. Yeah. Okay. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. Special shout out to three new high tier patreons all of which have names i'm about to struggle with let's go ahead and jump on into them panot p-a-n-o-t i think i got that jirka bidozovsky bidzovsky bidzovsky i don't know why i'm making it russian i'm assuming russian and let's go for the last one here juliano nilhus dutra why okay i think i actually didn't do terribly on those so let me know if I did or did not in the comments down below. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.